Hey, it's Tesla Knack. I'm back with another video. I'm here with uh, Tesla Kev. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be converting a NEMA 1450 uh, charging setup and we're going to be putting in a Tesla high powered wall charger. The uh, viewer has already had the NEMA 1450 set up with a 60 amp breaker, so we should be good to go. All right, over to Tesla Kev to explain in more detail what we're going to be doing today. So the question is, why is this a benefit? Um, there's two scenarios. One, when you set up the NEMA 1450 on a 50 amp breaker, um, you have a maximum charging um, level of 40 amps. But most uh, NEMA 1450 chargers and even the Tesla uh, mobile connector either max out at 30 or 32 amps. Being able to use the full 40 amps uh, provides you with a 25% uh, bump in, in charging. Uh, and in this case, uh, the owner actually uh, thought ahead uh, or got some really great advice and put uh, his uh, NEMA 1450 on a 60 amp charger which will now allow us to set the high power wall connector to 48 amps which is the maximum that the car will accept at home um, thus improving your charge rate uh, significantly. It also allows you in the future to be able to connect another high power wall connector uh, and share the uh, circuit for powering multiple cars if, if that is your ultimate goal. Okay, so really great thing about this installation is the electrician had enough foresight to set up a junction box, which is going to make our installation really easy. Um, the difference between the wall connector and the NEMA 1450 is that the, uh, uh, the wall connector doesn't use the uh, white wire, so we're just going to disconnect it at the box and cap it, uh, and then uh, use the remaining wires to set up our installation. So the first thing we do is remove the uh, panel cover. And as you can see, we have all of our connections here. We're going to make sure, we've turned off the panel at the, the power at the panel, but we're, we are gonna make sure that we uh, test everything and make sure that there is no power here whatsoever. So, and so from there, as we mentioned, we're not going to use the white wires. So the white wires will be capped. We're gonna use a different color cap to ensure that it's easy to discern from the, remain, the rest of the connections. Make sure they're on nice and tight. And then we'll reinstall the cover and go from there. Okay, now that we've disconnected the white um, in the junction box and capped those lines, we're uh, going to check as well, make sure we got no current, we don't, um, we knew that, but we want to be safe. Next, we're going to remove the, um, the NEMA 1450 uh, plug, so we'll be just left with wires, which you can see here, and the red has already come off, not a good sign, but it makes our job easier. So we're going to just loosen these connections. And we'll save this for install later. Okay, so uh, now we've got the uh, plug receptacle removed. All of the box remains. We'll have to remove the box um, uh, and the, the ground. So first thing we're gonna do is uh, remove the ground from the box. Make sure that's nice and clean. And then remove the... The screws holding the box to the wall. We've loosened the connectors. on the wall so we can reposition the line based on where, where we want the uh, high power wall connector. And that's pretty much it. So we're now gonna remove the box um, and then reposition the line. Uh, we'll, we'll be back with the, um, the wall mount, which we're gonna position in a moment. 
So for our purposes, uh, the most important part here is uh, the bottom entry, uh, you use the low profile bracket. We'll be using this for the uh, install. Um, for um, rear or top mounted installations, there's a special bracket that uh, is included in the package, which we will not be using today. All the screws you need um, and caps are provided. Uh, this is the, the mount for the um, behind the rear or top installation, uh, which we will not be using today. But as you can see, it's got all the uh, all the connectors. We won't be using this today. Um, so what we've done now is we removed the uh, receptacle. We've uh, removed the hooks on the line. We figured out where we want to place our uh, high power wall charger and we're using uh, a bottom installation. So it's the low profile bracket. We've used a level and we've marked our holes. We're now going to drill the holes, the pilot holes, and then uh, mount the bracket and then mount the wall connector on top of it. Okay, so we've mounted our low profile bracket for the uh, bottom feed installation. Um, one thing a note, make sure you use the correct mounting for the correct wall surface that you're using. We have cinder blocks, so we use uh, concrete anchors. Um, depending on what you're using, you'll have to adjust accordingly. Uh, we've also taken off the, uh, both the uh, front cover and the ceiling cover, um, of which you'll notice, be careful when you're taking the ceiling cover off because uh, it's connected, uh, the LED status uh, light is connected to a ribbon here and you don't want to pull on this. So it's, it's taped in here nicely. Um, it's, from there, it's a really simple uh, installation. Make sure the, uh, the large holes are at the top. Um, by now, if you've mounted and you haven't uh, got the holes lined up correctly, you'll figure it out pretty quickly. Uh, top holes uh, fit right into the bracket. And then you just screw it in from there. Screw it in from there, uh, four screws, and then you can do the electrical uh, connections, which we will do in a moment. Okay, so we've got the unit mounted. We have the cable coming up through. Um, and so we have three wires to connect. Uh, you'll notice this capped white. Uh, it's disconnected at the junction box. There's a dead wire. There's nothing coming through here. We'll find a way, a place to put it uh, once we've done the installation. Um, basically, there's three wires to connect. You have your ground, which is uh, in the back here. Uh, you have your... Um, uh, your level one and level two here, uh, and it's, it's black and red, and these wires are a little long, so we're gonna need to cut them, um, cut them, strip them, and then come back and show you what it looks like when I'm connected. So we've now completed the wiring. Uh, so what you'll see here is in the back, there's the ground, your L1, L2, black, red, connected here. Um, the wires are very thick, so it's a little challenge to get them up into the holes properly. Make sure these are all the way in and very tight and torque spec um, into the manual. Um, and now we're going to be putting on the uh, seal cover, um, reconnecting, of course, the status light indicator panel, and then the top cover will go on, and we will uh, come back to you after that's complete and show you what it looks like. Uh, the, just a note that there is the uh, that white wire that is dead from the box is also capped in here and we've just tucked it away so it's out of the way. Um, before we put the seal cover on and connect the um, connect the status light indicator, uh, one thing you need to note is there are dip switches, um, two dip switches, and then an amperage setting, a max amperage setting for the uh, for the unit. Make sure you consult the uh, manual to ensure you have the right settings. Uh, for our purposes, uh, dip switch uh, number one is off and dip switch number two is on, um, indicating 240 volts or less. Um, you would switch those if it's more. Um, and then for the amperage, we are on a 60 amp breaker, so we've set it at max 48 amps uh, for the output, which is setting number nine. There's a table in the manual which you can refer to uh, for your own settings. So, uh, as you can see, um, we're all done. Uh, everything worked out fine. Uh, we had a little bit of a snafu. Uh, the, the unit was only pushing out 32 amps uh, on our uh, test car. Uh, and it turns out we found out the hard way that the uh, standard range plus 
uh, onboard charger is limited to 38 from the standard 48 amps that everyone else gets. So that was uh, interesting, but we've tested on both types of vehicles. It's pushing the full 48 amps uh, for cars that accept it. Hey, Tesla Connect back. I've been behind the camera for this one. I want to say a big thank you to Tesla Kev for coming out, helping with this video and uh, for a great job. And uh, my other viewer here, he's been behind the scenes as well. Uh, very happy with the end result other than his car being limited to 32 amps. Go figure. All right, that's it for today. Tesla Connect, over and out. Thank you.